This is Austin Real Estate Investing. Austin Real Estate Investing. We'll be discussing real estate investing in Austin, Texas, and bringing you experts from all different sectors of the real estate game. Your host, Jordan Moorhead, is a real estate agent and investor in Austin and is here to help you get started or to build your portfolio and explore new strategies. Hi, this is Jordan Moorhead with the Moorhead team, and this is Austin Real Estate Investing. Today, we've got Scott Royal Smith with Royal Legal Solutions. He's a longtime real estate investor, and they operate in all 50 states, helping with asset protection and literally everything else. So, hey, Scott, how are you doing? Hey, great to uh, be here with you today, Jordan. I um you know, I love coming on shows like this because it's not often that everybody gets to hear from a real estate investor who also happens to be an attorney, yeah. who also works in a firm that works exclusively with real estate investors all over the country in every asset class. So I literally love coming on shows like yours today because I love giving away all the secrets of like, what are all the things that nobody ever tells you about, about like, how can you be most efficient? So be an open book for you today on anything that you want to talk about. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you here because we don't get the opportunity to talk to people like you very often. So thank you so much for coming on. Really quick, could you tell our audience who you are and how you're involved with real estate investing? I know you touched on it there, but let's just yeah. go real in depth. Yeah, so I actually got started in real estate investing in law school. I bought a transmission and auto repair shop and then rehabbed the building and flipped the business in the building to graduate from law school without any debt. And then I just kept buying real estate because I was like, man, this is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me is like being able to do that. Um, even while I was working as a litigation attorney, suing insurance companies, turns out insurance companies are great at collecting premiums and even better at denying coverage whenever anything comes up. Right. And so we were suing the heck out of them uh, when they would do that. And, uh, but, and that's when I realized for my own real estate investing, I was like, hey, man, you know, insurance is, has been awesome for me. A lot of times they took care of some of the small claims, but anytime the bigger things happened, I knew that I really had to fight to get them to, to cover it. Um, and, uh, and sometimes they wouldn't even, right. Um, so that's when I was like, well, great. I need to start putting like LLC structures and other structures in place to help uh, protect my assets. And then how does that work and impact my taxes and my estate planning and my ins my insurance as like umbrella policies and, you know, property insurance. And what are all those things that I have to do, um, to be able to, what I wanted to do was accomplish financial freedom through my real estate investing. Mm -hmm. And and once I started making more money or enough money in my real estate investing, I actually left uh, practicing law um, first part time and then then completely to just focus on real estate investing. Um, and I hit my financial freedom numbers that I needed to hit at that time of my life. Um, and I said, like, oh, this is great. And uh, I just kept going to the meetup groups and talking to people. And they say, hey, man, what are you doing, Scott? Looks like you're doing well. What are you doing with your entity structuring? You know, um, do you know anything about like how to own assets like anonymously, you know, because I don't like people being able to find out everything that I own. Right. And, you know, how are you going to do this with your estate plan? And what kind of CPAs do you look at? And, you know, how do you get proactive tax strategy out of a CPA? We were struggling being able to find out how to get that. Nobody seems to know what that looks like. Can you help us figure out what that works for you and, and who you're using? Um, and this is when I first realized, I was like, well, I need if I want to be in best and highest service to people, then that's what I really need to create. I need to start looking at how can I create an in-house, um, all of those services underneath one roof, which is what Royal Legal Solutions really is. It's a one-stop shop for everything that re a real estate investor would need um, and under one roof. So that way it takes all the quarterbacking of all of the professionals out of the equation for the investor. They can have reliable, integrated, holistic um, types of support. And that approach um, launched me into bigger pockets podcast episode 109. And I was getting about 30 phone calls a day for the first year. And I dropped my own, my personal email and phone number. And I was like, well, nobody going to call me. This stuff is not that interesting. Turns out everybody actually needed it. Um, and now seven years later, right? I have a staff of about 40 people. We work with 2000 investors in all 50 states and every asset class and protect. Uh, I think we just crossed the over 3 billion in assets that we protect underneath our, um, our portfolio, our strategies. Uh, that we work with. So um, it's really exciting. Um, I love it. it. It actually, the demand actually just keeps increasing for like what new things people are asking us to in-house uh, for them um, to take even more off of their plate. Um, so it's my pleasure to be working 
uh, as hard as I am, uh, even though I, uh, I guess I technically don't need to, but I have to, right? It's like my inner yeah. calling to be like, hey, I can really make massive impact here to help people. Um, and so that's what Royal Legal Solutions is all about. And that's my story of, of getting into it. And I'm still active in real estate investing, although now with the market the way it is, I'm starting to divest out of some of my dog investments and looking at that to start, um, just to start getting a little bit more uh, diversification um, in the right kind of way, because I'm just not 100% sure that this kind of a hot market is really sustainable, that these kinds of prices are really sustainable without a major correction. Yeah, no, I love that. I, I really like that you said, hey, I'm financially free. What else am I going to do? And how am I going to add value to other people? So I think that leads me to my next question. Everybody just says, hey, you know, should I just make an LLC? And that's how I'm going to protect my properties. For Let's say that for the beginning real estate investor that's got one, two, three, four properties, what do they need to do to protect their assets? And what's the best way they can protect their assets? And this isn't legal advice for anybody listening. It's just, well, I'll let Scott take that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not anybody's attorney, of course, right? We're just sure. shooting an episode here, right? So mm -hmm. uh, if you want legal advice or you want to look at that as right, it's just go into royallegalsolutions.com and start interact with the team. And there you go. We have tons of resources. We have thousands of thousands of hours of videos and 11 eBooks. And we just have tons and tons and tons of free content awesome. that we give to everybody. Our, our methodology is to educate people as much as we can for free. Right. Mm -hmm. And they say over time, the, the customers or the clients we work with are educated clients because we're interested in an endpoint of how many people can we help get to financial freedom. And so what are going to be the systems that are integrated, that are holistic um, and that are efficient uh, to help accelerate the path to financial freedom as fast as we can for people. And what that ends up being is you need to spend most of your time and money on deals, um, not on all of the operational pieces, but you need all of the operational pieces in place to make sure you don't have a downward spike, that the unexpected events of life are going to cause you a downward spike um, and or eat away all your time because you spend so much time managing these companies and managing all this stuff and it becomes complicated or whatever. That's another thing that could slow you down on your path to freedom. So we, we focus heavily on that aspect too. I mean, this, these things actually became so important for me because I had a friend of mine who lost over $3 million from a single lawsuit wow. and he had great insurance in place, which is the number one first thing you should have, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to be protected is a great umbrella insurance policy. If you can't afford anything besides that, have a great umbrella insurance policy. Mm -hmm. The mistake that he made and that a lot of people I think make that are just talking to the people in their local meetup groups or looking online or talking to their CPA um, as if they're, you know, I always ask people when they say, well, my CPA told me that. And I was like, well, when you get sued, who are you going to call? Do you call your CPA to ask you what to do with this lawsuit? Or are you going to end up calling me to tell you, here's how you need to defend yourself? Well, this is what I'm telling you you need to do to set me up to be able to help you, mm -hmm. right? And when that thing happens, right? So with his case, right, he's like, ah, go, I got, I got a huge umbrella insurance policy. I'm great. And nothing, you know, um, I don't think, you know, I don't think I need any of the extra stuff. What he didn't know is that insurance is great. It covers you from most risk most of the time. But when big claims happen, the business model of insurance companies is to deny big claims. Mm -hmm. What they do. There's also things that insurance policies never cover, which is going to be any type of alleged uh, intentional act, which is a breach of contract or an allegation of fraud. So he had a different deal that he got into. Which and he needed to, and he breached the contract on. He said this deal is actually not good at all um, that I have here, and so I'm backing out of the deal. It ended up being a lawsuit, and in that lawsuit, he ended up losing. And then they were able to come after him for three million dollars wow. because of it, right? And they were able to take a significant uh, part of his portfolio because of it. And it's because insurance only protects you from accidents, right? But insurance actually doesn't protect you from all accidents. If the, if whenever you have a claim that's a large claim, the insurance company will say you knew or should have known whatever the risk was. Grandma fell through the stairs. You should have known that the risk that the stairs were faulty. Mm -hmm. How do they make that determination? They can just decide that yeah. on their own, right? Leaving you having to sue your own insurance company, right? For it, it's called something called gross negligence. It gives them a carve out to give them the ability to just deny any claim they want to, right? So. 
you have to understand that, yeah, of course, insurance is your best first investment on your way to protection. But if you want to be bulletproof, you need LLC protection on top of your insurance. And if you want better protection than just LLC protection, then you want to have anonymity with the ownership of your LLCs and your assets. Because if people can't find out what you own or where your assets are or that you have anything at all and it looks like you qualify for food stamps, guess how many people look like they qualify for food stamps and getting, are getting sued? Zero. Because ain't nobody trying to sue somebody they can't get something out of. And they want to know that on the front end. So if it's all hidden, they're not able to pull it together and say, hey, we feel confident that we're going to spend this $50,000 on the lawsuit, that there's something there to get. But if all the assets are in your name, which is the worst way you can hold it, they know precisely that I can sue you, Jordan, and get to everything else that you own. If it's held inside LLCs and behind anonymous trusts, then there's nothing there for them to get. So the lawsuits simply just don't happen in those types of circumstances uh, in most all cases. And the ones that we have had lawsuits happen, um, the protections come in to minimize the damage that it can be done to you. Um, and in most cases, the pure function of the way the entity, the legal structures work, make it a bad business decision for somebody to ever sue you. Mm -hmm. So just the function of the system regardless of the facts of whether there was actually fraud committed, whether there was actually a breach of contract can get lawsuits dismissed. And that's, those are other cases that we've worked with, especially that happened with, um, with flippers, you know, that are, are in high litigation types of real estate like that. Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm understanding right and feel free to correct me because I completely could be wrong. I, I'm hearing, you know, get, get great insurance, get an umbrella policy, get an LLC that holds your property and then maybe a trust that owns the LLC. Am I hearing that right? Yeah. It's the way to create anonymity. So there's, mm -hmm. you want to be able to, you, you can use trust structures that are unfiled trusts mm -hmm. where there are types of like revocable grantor trusts. You can use that to own the piece of real estate. You can also use a separate revocable grantor trust to own your LLC. Mm -hmm. So that way, whether people are trying to say like, hey, does Jordan own an LLC? Well, his name doesn't appear on any of the LLC documentation. Mm -hmm. His address or any of his personal information doesn't appear on that LLC documentation either because it's all routed to a law firm. If we try to ask the law firm, the law firm, everything there is protected by attorney-client privilege. So it's a black box yeah. of information to find out what's going on with that LLC. Same thing with these land trusts, right? Mm -hmm. These revocable grantor land trusts that are owned by the LLC. So it has asset protection, lawsuit protection, because it's owned by the LLC. You need the LLC to have that type of lawsuit protection. But the revocable grantor land trust uh, provides anonymity and ownership of the asset. When they say, who owns this, who owns this uh, piece of property? It's the name of an attorney and the name of the trust, and it's all connected to the law firm. So you can't even find out who owns that piece of property. Right. If you want, if you as the client need to prove you own the piece of property, will you produce the trust? The trust will show that you are actually the owner and in control of the property. Mm -hmm. But it can be structured in such a way that none of the client's information is ever put onto the trust. And better yet, another piece of the protection is, is that when you want to sue a trust, you actually have to serve notice upon the trustee. Well, for all of my clients, I tell them, good luck with whoever that is trying to find me. I'm out like climbing mountains. I'm out and like promoting. I'm working all around the world and in the country. Yeah. There ain't no way they ever going to find me, you know, into it to be able to serve us with the lawsuit. That becomes incredibly expensive and laborious and its own right to be able to just be able to start the lawsuit. Right. Yeah. And you can see like you can hide the assets. You compartmentalize them inside the LLC. If they so, if they sue that asset, they can only get to that asset. They can't get to any of your other assets. If they sue you personally, they can't get to any of your assets because it's owned by an LLC. Mm -hmm. And once the assets are owned by an LLC, you don't own them anymore. So mm -hmm. that way they can sue you because you got in that car wreck. But it doesn't matter because you don't own anything they can take. So that lawsuit is just not going to happen. And if they want to file a lawsuit against your asset, then they have to go and try to find Scott and spend you know tens of thousands of dollars in uh, service of process fees before the lawsuit even starts just to be able to get it off the ground, I think I'm sued. So this is what I mean. The system is designed to defeat lawsuits regardless of the facts. Now, is it is it 100% book? Is there no possible way that they can, they can ever 
hypothetically succeed? Well, nobody can guarantee that, right? That kind of solution doesn't exist in reality, right? But there's a cost-efficient way for the average investor using this type of strategy that can take advantage of it without changing anything on their taxes, making everything easy with one bank account, one set of accounting records, mm -hmm. uh, they do. No annual maintenance has to be done to it on their end mm -hmm. to be able to maintain it. Um, and that's affordable for the person that typically has between one and six properties. Of course, more properties, fine, right? But our average client has between one and six properties uh, that comes through and, and is interested in the right foundations for long-term growth. And that's what we like our little niche is, is what are the absolute best solutions that you can get, like what I'm talking about here, that are appropriate for the average investor that gives you long-term growth and is is something that is cost efficient as well as time efficient. So they can spend more time finding deals to make more money. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So back to finding deals. <clears throat> and absolutely, I think we want to talk more about asset protection and how, how you can help people with asset protection. But back to finding deals, how did you get started in real estate investing? So you talked about this uh, mechanic shop that you flipped in law school, but what attracted you to real estate investing in law school? <laughs> it's just an opportunity that fell in my lap. We were able to buy really? the asset in the business for $10,000 in back taxes. Wow. I said, well, worst case scenario, we could probably flip this for 30 or 40. I thought I'd make a quick 10 grand mm -hmm. off of it. And then I was like, great. I pay back my investors into the deal as me and a partner. And I was like, oh, okay, well, we'll just do that, make some quick money and turn it around. But we realized that we were actually okay at running the business. We said, well, cool. That'll give us some spending money. And then we found ways to rehab the building and got better at, at what the business was it's called A1 transmission. And we got, you know, we were, we were, we got like free publicity out of the newspaper by like sharing a story about like how we were helping a local orphanage with like one of their transmission repairs, for one of their vans that broke down. So we got tons of free publicity from doing that. Right. And, and so I was doing a lot of stuff back in that time about like how to hack. I couldn't afford ads. Right. So I needed to find ways that I could hack way into publicity mm -hmm. to create a story so I could basically get um, free advertising um, that would come with it. So it was, it was a little bit by happenstance, right. As how most life can go. Right. Yeah. Um, but it was like, once I got into it, that I was like, ah, oh, I'm totally hooked um, on what this would look like because the way I looked at real estate investing was to say, well, listen, I got a stable asset here. If I buy it, right. It, it, it won't really go down in value from where that market was at that time. Um, and I can make it cash flow. And if I can't make it cash flow, I know I can turn around and flip it, right? And I'll make some money off of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm even thinking about now. And like what I'm doing with my personal assets now and the types of investment opportunities I create inside of Royal Legal Solutions for our members is a premise on that idea, which is how do we find stable assets now that we don't that are lower in price, right? There are they're not going to go down in price of the much with the underlying asset. They're already what's called like um, price compressed, right? Is what they refer to in investment world. The compression of the market happened with the underlying asset, and then how can we make those assets cash flow? And can we diversify what those assets are outside of real estate? but with them performing very much like what we want with real estate, which is stable underlying asset and cash flow. Mm -hmm. So uh, back to A1 transmission, where was A1 transmission? That's Albany, New York. That's where I went to law school. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. I went to law school in Albany, New York. Got the heck out of there because I just couldn't do the that's snow right. anymore. Yeah. I moved to Austin, Texas, and that's where I started uh, started the firm and and started working in Austin, Texas, doing that uh, and and growing growing my real estate around that Austin area. That's awesome. I have a buddy who graduated from UT Law a few years back, and, and he, obviously Texas is a good place to be in law. So I think you're in the right spot. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's really it's interesting because like I was practicing law there, and I really enjoyed my time being a litigator and working on like the appellate courts because it taught me you know, like some ninja skills about how to do research, right? And how to research, like, and how to know how things would actually play out, right? So there's a lot of theory that happens in law. I think like we've probably all talked to professionals who are like, well, maybe you'll go this way, maybe you'll go this way, whatever. And what the cool thing is, is what you can, um, once you know how to research correctly and you have some experience in the litigation field, mm -hmm. what it's equipped, um, what's neat about that is that you're able to go into like, where is the gray zone? 
right? Where are we at the appropriate level of aggressiveness, right? Because we're too white hat, we're losing money off the table, right? If you're black hat, when it comes, especially in things like taxes, you might go to jail, right? Because, <laughs> yeah. so you need to know like, what is the level that I can play in that I'm taking all advantage of all the things that I reasonably should um, and making sure that I'm actually in my worst case scenario, um, I'm still fine. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's the game. Right. And that's why, you know, with me as my tax attorney basis and and housing a CPA and MBA under a two is like that's where we've dialed in. I'm like, OK, cool. Here's how these strategies, here's how aggressive we can be and still be on the right side of of anything that we're doing. Right. Um, and it's pretty amazing taking those kind of things like we've run it. We have run into zero cases where we haven't made. Um, we haven't made everybody's money back on investing in tax and asset protection inside of the first year at the very latest year two, right? So I was like, I don't know how to explain this to people the right way, but I'm like, asset protection and tax strategy appropriately done should be one of your highest ROI investments. It should be delivering you something between like a 30 to 40% return on investment, right? Because of how much money you're saving from not having to pay out. Right? I just don't think a lot of people think in those terms, but all the money we spend as investors should, I believe, should be viewed through that lens, mm -hmm. right? Is it's got to give me an ROI. What is the ROI it's going to be? And some of the ROIs on asset protection are just like, listen, you need to do this stuff because it's the only way to ensure that you don't end up with one event in your life, wiping out a ton of your net worth and sending you back five or 10 years, like it did with my buddy who, who lost over $3 million from that single lawsuit. Yeah, that's yeah, that's so important. So, <clears throat> you know, earlier we talked about uh, umbrella policies, which I've always been a big fan. So they're actually really cheap, and you, know, you don't pay a lot, and you get a lot, a lot of coverage. For let's say for every million dollars in assets, what sort of umbrella policy are you recommending people get, or is there any sort of blanket recommendation? I, you know, I think that you probably just I would just probably I just have a million dollar umbrella policy. And then what I do is say, cool, that's going to cover against the nuisance claims that are going to come up. I don't want to have to defend, you know, I just want an insurance company to come in and take care of it, right? Mm -hmm. The reality is with higher level deductible umbrella insurance policies, I question how effective they really are. Because the business model of the insurance company doesn't have anything to do with your limits of liability coverage inside of your umbrella policy. It has everything to do with the fact about how much is it going to cost for us to have to pay out on this claim for us to say either we want to pay it out or we want to reject the claim. Hey, guys, this is Jordan Moorhead here, and I wanted to ask if you could do a huge favor for me. If you could go leave a review for this podcast wherever you're listening to it, that would really help me get this into the hands of other people that are interested in information about Austin real estate investing and I'd be able to help more people. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm lucky my business partner in the real estate investing side of things is an insurance agent. Yeah. So I don't even think about that stuff. I just say, hey, what should we do? Um, well, it, 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 the, the point of the story is, yeah, you should have umbrella insurance policy because you want to get rid of nuisances, which is what insurance yeah. is designed to do. But above the insurance... The only way to protect yourself is with an LLC or a series LLC, which gives you basically the ability to create an infinite number of LLCs for free. And you can use them. You can form them in Delaware, Texas, Nevada, or Wyoming, where there's strong uh, charging order protections. And you can use them anywhere in the country. Just like you use a Delaware LLC formed in Delaware and use it anywhere else, you can do the same thing with these series LLCs. Um, and they and like you literally can create LLCs on your desktop for free. It's crazy. Uh, but it's been around for over 20 years, and it's well uh, well vetted. And what are the protections I can give you? I've defended it a ton of times um, coming into any type of litigation proceeding that we've had. So if you do the insurance, the only way to cover the gap next is with the LLC protections. I like to use a series LLC because a series LLC allows me to compartmentalize every asset. If it were owned by an individual LLC, but I didn't have to pay anything to create that LLC, I don't have to ma maintain any of those individual LLCs each year because of the series nature. Um, and that way, I know that my worst case scenario, somebody sues me, they can't get to any of my assets because my assets are all held inside of a series LLC. If anybody sues one of my assets, they're all compartmentalized in its own little bucket. 
inside of my series LLC. So my worst case scenario is I lose one asset. So hopefully my insurance company steps into play to be able to take care of whatever that claim is going to be. But if they don't, my worst case scenario is I lose one property. And you have to compare that to like, if I owned all the assets in my personal name, and I have no insurance, they sue me, like they could take everything. If I have an insurance policy, hopefully my insurance policy covers me. But if they don't, then I'm back at square one, which is they'll take everything. They could potentially take everything I own, right? Yeah, and so the only way to escape that is the compartmentalization. Awesome. So I didn't know the series LLC was something where you create LLCs under your LLC, whatever the series LLC without having to pay for each one. Yeah, it's wild. You yeah. you get to file a single LLC with the state. And then on your desktop, on your computer, you can create what's called a child series of that series LLC. And just like any parent-child relationship, that parent that's filed with the state can create an infinite number of children. Each child you create for legal liability purposes functions just like an LLC. Mm-hmm. So and so your only your yearly maintenance that you have with a structure like that is one entity to maintain no matter how many child tiers you have you only have to maintain the parent so you only have one registered agent one yearly franchise tax filing one llc to do minutes on on like a yearly basis right so you're able to um, then have a really easy in one set of accounting books um, that just tags the income and expenses of the individual child series um and then for like for most people if they own it individually or if it's just like a husband and wife then it's actually a disregarded entity for tax purposes. So all of the income just gets reported onto the schedule of the personal return. So it's zero extra effort on your taxes. It's zero extra filings. It's, it's just the same as having to maintain a single LLC, but you get all of the benefits as if you had, you know, five or 10 LLCs to compartmentalize all of your assets. That's awesome. I think a lot of people are going to want to reach out to uh, you, Royal, royallegalsolutions.com to learn more about this. Um, so <clears throat> back, kind of back to back to beginning asset protection. So if you're a newer real estate investor, obviously the recommendations are, are get an umbrella policy, get an LLC. At what time does somebody need to talk about getting a trust that owns their LLC? We do it all at the same time okay. because the reality, the reality is, is that like the, the magic and the difficulty is figuring out how the trust need to function and with the LLC. Um, but they're actually not that hard to create. They don't cost us anything to create these trusts. There's no filing fees with them. We create them in house. Right. And they're not filed anywhere. And that's how we can maintain them to be anonymous. So our belief is you, you, whatever, if you're either you have multiple assets or you're looking to scale in multiple assets, then you want to start with a series LLC. You want to have that series LLC either owned by a trust to create the anonymity, or some people like to have it owned by a Wyoming LLC to create the create the anonymity. I think a Wyoming LLC is just an extra expense. You don't need to do it that way. It doesn't provide you any additional protection um, from my view because of how strong charging order protections are. Um, and at that point, um, you should own the LLC anonymously and all of the land trusts that you use to uh, hold title to the underlying asset, to that house, right? Um, those are also just as easy to create, right? And what we do is, is we take the property, right now. Um, you take that property as you currently own it, you deed it into the land trust. Now that you're inside of the land trust with that property, the, now the trust is owned by the child series, the series LLC. Um, so now you're able to own that property uh, anonymously. Right. Um, the advantage of deeding it into the land trust is that one, it creates the anonymity. Two, it creates that trustee protection. They have to serve me, Scott Royal Smith, as a listed trustee to be able to file a lawsuit against that property. But it also avoids the due on sale clause of your mortgage. So if you wanted to transfer your asset for your first 10 conforming loans and just to an LLC, you run into an issue where they say, hey, we'll call the note due. They're going to violate the due on sale clause. But with a properly structured land trust, you're able to avoid the due on sale clause per the St. Germain Act. And what that allows you to do is to keep your existing financing in place. And then any new properties that you would get, you acquire them in your personal name to get the best financing and then transfer it into the land trust after the fact to be able to have those first 10 of your single family homes 
uh, put together with the absolute best financing while creating the anonymity and not having to worry about um, any of those lending issues. That's awesome. I didn't know that was possible. You know, I, I've always been told that, hey, you know, like you, like you just said, if you transfer a uh, property that has a conforming loan on it within your name into an LLC, you trigger the due on sale clause. So don't do that because you don't want to trigger the deal, due on sale clause. Lots of times, maybe they won't find out, but who wants to find out if they're going to find out or not? So that's really cool that there's a, a workaround there. Um, I'm sure you're going to get some calls off that one. Um, so Scott, <clears throat> what's one thing you tell newer investors when they're get it start, getting started with real estate investing? So obviously you've got a long career in real estate investing and helping people protect their assets and just have a whole strategy around all their assets from a legal perspective. But when somebody comes to you and says, hey, Scott, I know you're a real estate investor. I want to get into real estate investing. What do you tell them? Have you wanted to be part of GoBundance, the tribe of millionaires, but just haven't hit that millionaire status yet? Well, now you can, not even being a millionaire, by joining our new program, GoBundance Emerge. My name's Jamie Gruber, creator of GoBundance Emerge and member of the GoBundance community. And now you can join GoBundance.com slash Emerge, GoBundance.com slash Emerge. Use code Jordan for $100 off this 12-week goal-setting program and mastermind that'll propel you to being a whole life millionaire. Well, I usually ask my question which is what do you want? Mm -hmm. Like, what is it that you're actually looking for out of real estate investing? Sure. Like, can you define for me, like what success actually looks like for you? Mm -hmm. Right. What is that endpoint? Cause once we can, we can establish what the endpoint is going to be, then that tells us what we might need to do now. Right. And what's going to be the, the setup that's going to equip you most efficiently and effectively to get to that endpoint. It comes through like a principle of like we should always start with the end in mind, right? Mm -hmm. But to know that we actually need to clearly define what the end is. How are we defining what success actually looks like? Mm -hmm. In a real estate investing game, that's usually being able to define out what is my passive income level that I'm trying to reach? Mm -hmm. And like, what are the avenues that I can use to be able to get there? And then you back into what are the legal structures that are going to be appropriate? Sure. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. A lot of people say, hey, I want to invest in real estate, but they don't have a very clear goal or an end in mind. And I, I always tell people the same thing. I say, hey, what are your goals? And we help people buy real estate here in the Central Texas area. And when somebody calls me and says, hey, I want to buy real estate in Austin, I say, what do you want to do? Why Austin? And not just, hey, let's sell you a property, but why do you want to buy a property? Why do you want to buy it here? And what are your goals? And we can help them reach that. But we don't have any idea if you don't tell us what you're trying to do. So Yeah, right. Well, it, it gives me like pretty easy. So we have a financial freedom calculator that we use mm -hmm. that helps people um, track their, their top, their top, uh, their top level Cape financial KPIs on tracking to like, how close are you to your financial freedom number? Right. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing that we find is saying like financial freedom, we define as saying when your passive income can equal your expenses. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's two ways to accelerate your path to financial freedom. You know, it's either you got to increase how fast you're going to accumulate your passive income, or you need to decrease your expenses and, and shrink down your lifestyle. Yeah. Both are effective at being able to accelerate your path to there. I'm not interested in going and living in a cave though. So I'm not willing to take my expenses down to zero. Right. So I'm going to say, say, cool, this is the lifestyle that I feel comfortable with. Right. And then you start tracking towards what do I need to do to get there? And I would recommend for everybody. It's, it's, you know, thinking in that kind of context, using the tools that we provide, you will help you get that kind of clarity because you can start to see like, this is how much income I can make. This is how much gets taken away from taxes. So maybe there's some tax strategies that I need to take advantage of to be able to reduce my tax liability. Here's how much money I end up at, at the end of the day with. Here's how much money is going to end up getting eaten by expenses. And here's how much money I've left over to invest. And then when I look at those investments, how can I best motivate that money to get invested to be able to impact what my passive income is going to be? And you just keep playing that game every, every year. And maybe you touch base on it with one of the local people that we have inside of our company to help you track on, hey, are you doing everything the right way? Are you, are you operating your companies the right way? Are you thinking through this way? Are you, are you clear about what it is that you're doing? You know, and what, what your intentions are with where you're going so you can get really clear on what are the actions you need to be taking and maybe some of the actions you need to stop taking, 
because they are act those you could be taking actions that are actually things that feel right to you that are counterproductive to your goals. But until you have a high level of clarity of what are the finances and how do they work and what am I what is my goal? What is it that I really want? Then the actions you're taking are just random. They're not actually going to be focused and the way to have faster than normal results. It's not that the other way is bad. It's just the question is is do you want faster than average results? Because if you do, then there's best practices. And we're a company that specializes on every area of your life. There's a best practice as it comes to real estate investing. And that's what we in-house and give away all the education for free and have three weekly coaching calls with my top level staff to say, you can have all the access to the staff, all the access to the education. You can have access to our Discord channel to be able to interact with the community and our staff 24 seven. If that's what you need in terms of support to be able to know that what you're doing is in line with your intentions and the path of best practices. Awesome. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll have all the, the ways that they can reach out to you and how they can follow you here in a second, because I think a lot of people are going to be interested in what, what you're providing. Um, what's next for you, Scott? So obviously you've been financially free for a long time. You you got back into the business to help people and you're doing a really good job at that. So what are your long-term goals and what are your visions for real estate investing in the future? Yeah, so uh, for me, as I said, like right now um, into it, I'm actually starting to invest out of a lot of my real estate mm -hmm. into it. I think if we just look at like how hard it is to find deals, right? Mm -hmm. What does that tell us about the basis of economics and supply and demand? If it's the supply is that hard to get to, does that mean demand has been overcooked, perhaps by low interest rates? Too many people entering the market, right? Probably has driven up prices quite a bit. Um, so for me, what I'm really interested in right now is um, in something I started for myself about six months ago, which was in commodities investing and looking at saying like, well, can I own ETFs, which are stocks that are connected directly to stuff you can eat, right? And commodities like corn, oil, hogs, that kind of stuff that's like, hey man, no matter what happens, people got to eat. So let me, I'm going to start investing over there and comes to find out that it's about at like an 80 to hundred year low of like where those prices oh, are. Wow. Cool. That's a great place for me to invest is like yeah. looking at how I can get into commodities. Cause it looks like that's a safe bet for me. And like what the underlying asset is going to be, which is why I originally loved real estate. And then I learned about things that were in uh, covered call options trading, which is where, um, I can essentially take zero risk as long as my underlying asset is how, what it is, right? I can essentially take zero risk and earn about a 10% per year return on the money mm -hmm. or a return on the asset that I have in place, which was what I was getting with my real estate. So what I've been really fascinated by, and I've been running it for myself here uh, with about a million dollars over the last six months um, is to get that track record of cool. What, what is a strategy that I can use that diversifies me out of real estate? Right. But it has the same flavor of security and cash flow, Right. And how can I do that for myself? And what we've started to do as well as being able to start to open that up to, um, to the public, right. To our investors first, right. Not to the general public, but just to the people that are inside of our communities that are looking for the way to say, listen, I'd love to be able to sell my real estate and do a 1031 exchange into your fund. We have it set up in a way that you can do that and not pay taxes on any of the gains and then still get a great return on my money, right? We have to take a, a management fee off of that 10%, right? Because I have to employ people to ensure that that fund is run um, in a way that is gonna be appropriate. Uh, and that I can feel secure in sense, you know, I can lose my own money all day long, but I feel guilty as hell if I lose somebody else's, right, <laughs> um, into it. Um, but it's still able to give a great return to, to what the investors are into the fund and give them an out in a place where I think a lot of people right now are feeling trapped, like I felt trapped, uh, but I didn't have anywhere to turn. Um, and so that's really what's next for me is it's, you know, still continuing to help real estate investors say like, listen, if you're finding great deals, buy the great deals because great deals are great deals. You don't ever pass up a great deal, right? But if it feels like you're stuck, if it feels like I just can't find what I'm looking for, then maybe it's the time to consider like a different alternative of how to diversify into something else um, that can still meet, you know, your underlying um, desires to have safe assets that can cash flow. Awesome. And 
can people find out about this by going to your website or what's the best way people could find out about this commodities fund that you've been talking about here? Or do they need to join your group to find out about it? Yeah, no, it's really easy. All, all people have to do is if you go to royallegalsolutions.com mm -hmm. and then you go to the get a price at the top of the page and take the quiz um, that comes with that. It's on that okay. page. That quiz, it gives us all the basic information about who you are to make sure that we're going to talk to you about the right things because we help people that are at zero net worth all the way up to $50 million in net worth, right? Mm -hmm. So who you are and what's going on with you really helps us. And that quiz helps us dial in what's going to be important to this person because we've worked with over 2,000 clients. So we can tell from there, here's what's going to be the critical information for the, helping this person at this point in their journey whatever that happens to be, right? Um, and from there, you're able to connect with the staff and we can find out, hey, what are, what are you most interested in? Are you really thinking about your asset protection right now? Are you thinking about your estate planning and how to make sure to avoid probate and pass those assets anonymously to your heirs? Mm -hmm. um, are you really interested in diversifying out of real estate? Where do we start the conversation with you of what's most top of mind? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then through that process, we'll be able to work with you as we learn more about you, about you know, what are the other things that we can do inside of asset protection, estate planning, tax, insurance, um, the investment fund. Do you need help with actually like learning how to execute better? Find out what it is that you really want to dial in on what those goals are and how do you execute around those goals, which we also teach on every Monday with my with my execution experience as a CEO, leading organizations of being a high, type A, highly driven person, what's been really successful for me and how do I operate to lead to great financial success? And how do I see that repeatable for people over time and teaching to that, right? So it's really part of like a holistic uh, offering, right? It's a holistic way to be able to have that kind of relationship in one roof, under all of one, under one roof. And it relates to um, an area I think that, uh, nobody else I can find is really doing it, right? Which is, here's all of the stuff that you can get educated on. Here's all of the things that you can buy or pay us to do for you. Here's the education if you want to learn how to do it on your own. And by the way, you can come to our weekly coaching calls on investing or tax or royal life, which is all about how do you execute and get clarity on what it is that you need to do. And you can meet our top level professionals there every week and ask them whatever questions you have. Because there's a Q&A after every session and there's a community of other investors that are already involved. So you can already start to connect and up your networking by just connecting with the people that are our current clients and have that opportunity to be able to do that. And by the way, any other questions that you might have, jump into our Discord channel. Start interacting with the community and our professional staff monitors that community to be able to ensure there's information there. So I think that's what makes us like unique and that's the way to enter it in is just going to royallegalsolutions.com, taking the quiz and just start the process of helping. We can help you facilitate how to integrate in the community, how to join in on the, the coaching calls. If you can't join them, where do you find the recordings of them? You know, how can we start getting one-on-one -on -one meetings with the staff? How can we start pairing you with the right eBooks or the right videos for the education that's appropriate for where you're at in the journey? But it all starts with taking the quiz because without that, we don't know where to start the conversation with you. All right. Well, next question then is how, how do people get a hold of you? But we already know royallegalsolutions.com is the best way to interact with your community. Is there any other way people can get a hold of you or follow you or Royal Legal Solutions? Yeah, that's the best way. Okay. Like, that's, that's our best way of saying like, because that going to that royallegalsolutions.com, clicking on the get a price at the top of the page and taking the quiz mm -hmm. is the way in which that we can start to have the data we need to know what communities are going to be most important to you. Otherwise you're going to just get like 30 things, right? But most people only need like three mm -hmm. out of the 30 things that we do. Right. Yeah. So that's how we can dial it in to save people uh, it, hours and hours and hours of studying the wrong stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, time is important. So definitely want to figure out what you need to study and figure out where you need to go. And I think it sounds like Royal Legal Solutions is the best way to get a hold of you and learn more about that. Um, <clears throat> all right, Scott, wrapping up here, last question, most important question that we ask, what is your favorite restaurant in Austin? Oh, it's gotta be Red Ash, man. If you can get a, if you can get a reservation to it, or if you can just get lucky enough, like you do, Jordan, yeah, with like a wink and a smile to get in, I think it's the hair. If I was going to take a guess why well, I've never been yeah. able to do that, that hair, I think, gives you superpowers over me. Oh, uh, but I'd love Thank that you. Ask, man. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we've had good luck going later at night and just asking, hey, you got a table for two. We've snuck in a couple of times that way. 
Oh man, I tell you, God was smiling on you that day, brother. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for coming on here, Scott. I found this very valuable and I'm absolutely going to Royal Legal Solutions after this. But again, thank you so much. And we will talk to you here soon. Thanks, Aaron. Take care. Yep. Thank you.